In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to get on Spotify playlists for free. I'm Todd McCarty, former Sony Music VP and label manager at Fearless Records. Pitching music to Spotify, Apple, and other music services was the focus of my record label career. For the past several years, I've been educating musicians, managers, and record labels through my member site, bandbuilderacademy.com. This discussion needs to start with the original goal for getting on playlists because a lot of people have either forgotten or misunderstood. The goal for getting on Spotify playlists is so that you can trigger Spotify's algorithmic playlists, which will lead to long-term streams and could last for years. Also, if you haven't been on official Spotify playlists yet, doing well in the algorithm can get the attention of Spotify's editorial team. Now that's the goal that most people know, but what they overlook is the goal of getting as many positive algorithm actions as possible and minimize skips. This will constantly send a message to the Spotify algorithm that your track is popular, and the algorithm will work hard for you, finding you new listeners constantly. So we're trying to get lots of positive user actions to trigger the algorithm. But which actions are positive? The better question is which ones are negative. And there's really only one big negative action, skips. Skips are the most powerful action on Spotify. And if you're not happy with the way your Spotify is going, skips are the reason. So here's a list of the positive actions. Search. This is when you type the artist name or song title into the Spotify search bar. That shows popularity because people are seeking you out without Spotify having to recommend you. App recommendations. These are all the different ways they recommend you if you look at like the home page of the Spotify app and just scroll. Those are all recommendations. Through plays. This is when the user listens to the whole song without skipping. A user listening more than once. This is a big one, and it's the reason that going for big broad playlists is gonna hurt you. Usually those only get you one play per user or a skip. Like it, heart it, or save it to their library. Follow the artist on Spotify. Add it to a user playlist. Add it to their queue. They can share it on Instagram stories, messenger, or by sharing the URL. Go to radio. View album view artist profile. Okay, now balance that out with the negative algorithm actions, and skips are pretty much the only one. There's others like unfollowing or don't show me songs like this, but by far skips is the most heavily weighted negative action. Next, I want to eliminate a few free playlist strategies that don't work. Stop doing these. Obviously bots and fake streams. Guaranteed failure. Don't even try to convince yourself that this strategy works. Don't mass email a big list of curators that you found from a service that charges you for a list of playlist curator contacts. Services that charge you for a big list of playlist curator contacts. Don't fall for it. I did. Trust me. Big disappointment. Now, if you're going to use a service to get a handful of curator contacts that fit your genre, that's probably okay. But I think you'll be disappointed with the quantity and freshness of the lists. Your own personal list of curator contacts is always better. The obvious benefit of these services is that they'll save you time. They'll tell you they constantly keep these lists up to date and adding new ones. Sounds great. This strategy will backfire because once the curator is listed on one of these services, it's game over for that playlist. That curator will get 50, 100, or more email submissions a day and become overwhelmed and frustrated with irrelevant submissions. I've been on the curator side of this and 80% of the submissions were from people that didn't fit the genre or mood. And trust me, it's no fun listening to 50 submissions just to find a handful of good songs that fit. It gets old really quick. There's a much easier way for serious curators to find good music. They don't need to take submissions. There's something else that bothers me about this strategy. Having that many playlist curators at your disposal is going to tempt you to take a quantity over quality approach. And you're probably going to send them a mass email that will most likely go into spam. It's also not a very personal approach, and you don't give them as much reason to want to take an interest in you. But the big reason this doesn't work is because you're going to land on playlists that will get you skips and kill your algorithm. And it's also going to land you on some bots, too. Many of the curators you'll find on these lists want to put you on their playlist even if your song is in a good fit, because they want to sell you a spot or some other service. They know artists want playlists, and your submission is how they attract you to the service that they're selling. Don't use expensive analytics tools, at least not to help you find playlists. Now, 
I do like these analytics tools, like Vibrate, for example. Actually, Band Builder members get a free four-month premium subscription to Vibrate with your Band Builder membership. But playlist research is not the main reason to use an analytics service. Your Spotify for Artists portal and the Spotify desktop app are free, and they're the best place to start. And besides, these analytics services don't give you the email contacts. They just point you to the same thing that you can find for free on the Spotify app. Playlist trading in Facebook or Discord groups. Don't do these if the members come from all sorts of different genres. It'll only work if the community understands the danger of skips. And now, here are some of my favorite ways to get on Spotify playlists for free. Curate your own playlists. Put energy into growing followers on these playlists and make it a powerhouse in your genre or mood. You can't expect Spotify editorial playlists on every single release. So your own playlist can be a lifesaver when you need it. It's also a great networking tool for meeting other artists, managers, and labels within your genre, which leads to my next one. Trade playlists with your friends and other artists. This is a nice free and organic way to network and grow your playlisting at the same time. Finally, what I think is the single best strategy with the most long-term benefits for sustained algorithm growth. Create your own database. You need to have your very own list of contacts for perfect match listener playlists in your specific genres or moods. This will work for everybody. Now, it does require the most time and effort, but I also think it has the biggest long-term payoff for your algorithm. Now, if you're thinking, oh, here he goes with the Spotify discovered on strategy and hunting people down. I hear this all the time. Oh, that doesn't work anymore. All the curators either want to charge you or ignore you. There's no good playlists left. You're wrong. You've given up. You've not put enough dedication and work into it. Sure, some of what you said is true, but it doesn't mean you give up. There's new playlists coming up every day. You pivot. You get creative. You find a different way to connect with that curator. I'm going to walk you through some of the ways in this video. Band Builder members get my full strategy and all the tools inside my academy. I put in two hours a day on this. Set a reminder on your phone. Do that every day for a week and then take the next week off. Then come back to it a following week and hit it again. This way you won't burn out. But discipline yourself to put the work in. I'm not saying it'll be easy, but it will get easier after a month, after several months, after you build up enough friendships with curators that will get you quality play with very little skips, the algorithm will kick in. Notice I mentioned friendships. This is not some short-term thing. These playlists are important. I liken these curators to gatekeepers at radio stations or blogs. You need to have a strong relationship if you're gonna to continue to hit them up each time you release a new song. If you're selective about the playlists that you're pitching for and you put the work in, you won't have Spotify problems anymore. You won't have to be searching YouTube for the latest Spotify promotion tips. Now, when you make your list of listener playlists, they don't have to be big in terms of followers, but in terms of activity. And most importantly, there needs to be a lot of perfect match listeners tuning into the playlist. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you how to go about finding these perfect match playlists. But here's what I recommend when asking them to put you on their playlist. Once you get your list of curators and email addresses, reach out with a personalized email pitch that gives them a reason to want to help you. First, establish a connection musically to start the email off strong. Find common ground with an artist that you both like. That's an easy one. This cold email interruption isn't ideal, so think about how you might approach them if you were meeting in person. Two, apologize for the cold email, but just tell them that you're putting in the work to get on playlists that your music will sound great on. Three. I would mention some of the interesting points about your music and some of the marketing highlights too. This is the same stuff that's in your 150 word Spotify pitch. Four, keep it simple, short, and sweet. Nobody likes long emails. You don't need a press kit or a pre-save link or a long bio. I share lots of different pitch examples and go into way more detail in my Spotify course inside of Band Builder Academy. Okay, now we're gonna get into how we find good Spotify playlists and the curator contacts. Your spreadsheet should look something like this. You can sort of use these fields here. And I wanna remind you, uh, it's best always to get an email. If you can't get an email, Messenger is probably second best. Okay, so now let's go into Spotify for Artists. This is the first place I want you to start when you're looking for user playlists or listener playlists. 
go into the music tab and then click playlists and I'm going to change this to that and then you want to just scroll down these are the algorithmic playlists editorial and then you want to look at listener playlists and you can see that this particular artist has had 57,000 playlists hit show more and then you can start to see all of the ones and this column here shows how many total plays so you know these people are producing plays and they already like your music because they've added you. I mean, some of them have added three songs. So you know these people like the band. So this is where you want to start, and you just want to start making your database, and then look for ones that um, have first and last names. That's a good way to do it. Um, and, you know, just make your database and go, to, go try to find these people. So this is the best place to start. You can spend weeks in this and just go through and find people that already like your music. Okay, so the next place we look is in the Spotify app. Now really important here, I wouldn't use your phone or even the web browser when you're doing this research. The most powerful way to do it is on the Spotify desktop app on your computer or laptop. And so what you want to do is go down to the discovered section. It's right above the, the, the about section right here. And then click see all. And this lists the about 50 in each one. And um, it lists them from the most played down to the lowest amount of plays. So you know the top ones are the most powerful. And then you just want to start going through these. Ignore the ones that might be Spotify playlists because we're looking for independent listener playlists. Um, you might also see, see some ones from uh, companies and, and those type of things. You can try to hit them up, but usually you're going to find that individual users. Like if you click here, into Nick Hostetler. Um, you can see he's got some more public, uh, public playlists. You can see a photo, so you can look on Instagram or Facebook to see if you can find that, or LinkedIn. Um, you know, then just go back, go through a couple of them, and sometimes they'll leave some information in their description here, like an email or an Instagram. But you can see Kendall Moore here. Um, you can get her photo, look that up on Instagram, and try to you know, use Messenger for that. Um, just going through there's, there's this one looks like a company and it actually has an email address so look uh, this one is actually <laughs> producing some pretty good results you're gonna hit some roadblocks here but you just have to spend time and not take no for an answer um, you also want to make sure that you're not wasting your time so listen to the playlist and make sure that you're not gonna get skipped also I see an old date here November 2019 so if I sort this, and this is why you want to use your desktop app, seven hours ago. So this curator is definitely active. And usually the ones towards the top are active. Um, but sometimes if they're out of date, you don't want to waste your time with them. If you see the last time they curated was in 2017, don't, don't waste your time. The other thing I wanted to mention was move quickly. Don't, don't waste a lot of time on curators that you're not going to find. Um, like this one here, S9. There's no photo. A name like S9, you're just never going to find that one. So just move on. Don't waste your time. I guess I just want to stress, make sure that um, you're picking artists that sound similar to you and go through and listen to these playlists and make sure they're not going to get you skipped. But um, that's the basic strategy. I'm not going to go in more detail here. Um, members inside Band Builder Academy get the full strategy. Um, but I hope this helps you out. And this is what I'm talking about when we talk about the discovered on strategy. By the way, I've got a few power tips about many of these strategies, and members can access those inside of Band Builder Academy. I use a couple other member-only tools inside of Band Builder that were developed just for my academy. They help you find the best playlists to be on that have similar artists to you. Here's a sneak peek at one of them. This is the Genre Detector tool, and members learn how to use this strategy inside of Band Builder Academy. I'm going to go ahead and show you the Genre Detector tool, and this is it. You put in like a, a genre hit submit and it's gonna show you all these micro genres and it's pulling these directly from the Spotify API if you're a developing artist you might want to look at something smaller we'll check out this gauze pop genre here um, you can see some of the artists are smaller but what you do is you start to stack yourself up against these artists and find out what playlists they're getting in what media they're getting in and find their pathway to go up in the algorithm and 
it's not just this tool, but we use it in conjunction with my Spotify algorithm tool, which I'm not gonna show you because it gives too much away. And these are just some of the tools inside Band Builder that we use specifically for finding good free Spotify playlists. The email finder tool, the genre finder tool, the algorithm tool, and the playlist quality tool. If you haven't seen my video about getting on official Spotify playlists, make sure to check that video out here. And if you've already watched that one, then check out my playlist that has tons of Spotify tips. Thanks again. Take care, everybody.